G'day, I'd like to have a little bit of a yak to you today about chemicals. After about 10 years of working with chemicals uh, on vineyards and in orchards and on berry farms and things like that, I actually went and studied them in a cancer lab. And some of my results were published in the Annals of Occupational Hygiene, which is an Oxford University Press journal. And I've been a bit frustrated that um, the guys who work with the chemicals, that's you and me, are often the last people to read things like that. And I found a couple of really interesting things that we all take for granted that would make an incredible difference to our safety. So there's three basic messages that I want to share with you today. The first is the safety equipment, the suit, the mask, the glasses, everything else, that's not just for when you're spraying the chemicals, that's for when you're mixing them. A lot of people are being poisoned before they start spraying. Right. So let's get into safety. I'd better go get changed. That's better. Last thing to do is get out a box that I keep my respirator in. Sealed box, by the way, so I can't get air into it. And then my active carbon inside my filter is still active when I come time to spray the vineyard. A lot of people don't keep these things in sealed boxes. If you don't, you may as well just not wear it. Um, I'm also going to put on a pair of safety glasses because your eyes are really absorbent. I'm covered pretty much from head to toe. I've got nitrile gloves on. They're chemical rated gloves. Don't just use washing up gloves that you'd use in the kitchen. They've got to actually be designed to handle chemicals. And rubber boots, not leather boots. Leather's porous. You end up putting your foot in chemical every day you wear them. So even when you're mixing the chemical, you should be dressed up in your safety gear. So why am I making such a big deal about safety equipment? It's because what I've noticed is that particularly amongst people that do this for a living, when they're mixing the chemicals, they hardly ever wear safety equipment. And it's worse still for people that use cab tractors with a carbon filter. In those situations, you're exposing yourself to the most risk when you're mixing the chemical. So why wouldn't you be wearing safety equipment? The second thing I learned was that people don't clean their equipment after they spray. So if you've been spraying on your tractor, you take the sprayer off, you go and put a slasher on, and then in your shorts and t-shirt, you get back on that tractor and you're handling the outside of the tractor and you're putting the slasher on and off and everything else, and you haven't cleaned it, you're getting a concentrated dose of chemical. Now this tractor's being used for spraying at the moment, but can you imagine if it wasn't cleaned after spraying, how easy it would be to get contamination, even if you're going off and slashing. A lot of people do the right thing when they spray, and then they forget their hygiene once they've finished. Make sure if you're spraying with your tractor, you wash it afterwards and get the spray off it, because that's where I've found a lot of tractor operators actually get poisoned by their chemicals. It's not while they're spraying, it's after. matter if I'm doing eight rows or 800 rows. I'm going to treat chemicals with respect. Why? Because it's chronic long-term exposure, time after time after time that does the damage. Make sure you keep your PPE on even during wash down. The third thing I want to talk about is when you're actually physically working with the plants, like lifting wires here in the vineyard. In my research I found that vineyard workers who worked with foliage shortly after it was sprayed 
had up to a tenfold increase in copper levels in the buccal cells, it's the cheek cells, of their body. Basically, if the foliage has chemical on it, protect yourself from it. Anytime you're putting your arms into the foliage, while well, the foliage is getting all over you, you're not going to get sick overnight. But what will happen is chemicals will build up in your body over time. So it's really important to spray after you've lifted the wires, not before. And if you did spray close to a time when you have to work with the foliage, cover up. Don't wear short sleeve shirts like I am now. And hey guys, you could help me out a little bit. If you like this video and you'd like to subscribe, it'll really help out the channel. Just hit that red button down there, it doesn't cost you a cent. A lot of my non-farming friends ask me, why do we even use chemicals? I mean, surely we can grow food without chemical. Well, I've taken you out here in the bush to give you a good example of why we have to use chemicals and why it just makes economic sense and there's no getting around it. Let's have a look at this bush here. Can you see all the holes in the leaves? Every one of those holes that you see represents a loss in energy and a loss in vitality of that plant. That creates an economic loss. And if you're a farmer, and you've got a 3 or 5% margin of profit on your crop and you're losing 30% of the energy that that plant is locking up from the sun you can't make a profit there's a simple reason why mankind as a whole didn't have enough access to food and tended to have a lot of starvation events up until about 100 years ago what we've got to get good at is now that we've got those techniques using them wisely and using them in balance. And so I think chemicals have a part to play in our farming future, a smaller part than they have in the past, but certainly a part.